in this problem, there is a cavity of radius r naught inside a solid sphere that has a uniform density rho and radius r. If you take a point inside that cavity at a position vector small r, then the point of the problem is to figure out what is the gravitational field at the point r. Once that is found out, then we could answer this question, what is the direction of initial motion of a point mass that is released somewhere in the cavity? Here is a clue with three steps to solve this problem. First, for any solid sphere, find out what is the gravitational field at a point R. The second step is to think about a method to break this system into a sum of two spheres, one sphere plus some other sphere. And the third and final step would be to now use superposition to add the effect of the first and the second sphere to get the final answer. The first step is to find out what is the gravitational field inside a solid sphere of uniform density. Two ways we can do it. One is to find the mass inside. Once we know the mass inside that's the only one that's going to contribute to the gravitational pull because by shell theorem we know that everything that's outside out here can produce no gravitational field at that point the second method would be to use the gauss theorem for gravitation the mass out there is equal to the volume which is four third pi r cube into the density Therefore, the gravitational field, it's attractive, it's inwards. And by shell theorem, we also know that all this mass is as though it's concentrated at the center of that sphere. Therefore, it's minus G. It's opposite to the vector R. And therefore, it's the negative direction of the unit vector R. Therefore, G has a nice simple form which looks like the point to note here is the gravitational field at that point is some number times the vector position of that point. The second step was to think of this system as made up of two spheres. We could think of the large sphere of radius r and to that, we could add a sphere, which is at that point given by vector A. But we want to add the two of these and generate a cavity out here. So there is already this small sphere out here. And it has a density rho, as does the rest of the sphere. So if you want to add the two of them and end up with the system with a cavity out here, we could say the smaller sphere has density minus rho. And when this sphere is added on to that, the rho and minus rho cancel out each other, and then we end up with a cavity out there. So that is the idea of breaking up this system into a sum of two systems. The third step is to look at the superposition of the two spheres. One has a density which is plus rho, other one is minus rho. You add the two of them, we end up with this system as we just now discussed. And therefore, we can now look at this point R. There was a vector, and that was A to the center of that sphere. From there, we had a vector to the point R. So what is really the vector to that particular point? The position vector here is going to be vector A plus this vector R. And therefore, the contribution from large sphere is going to be as we just discovered some time ago, that must be the contribution. To that, we need to add the g from small 
and that is going to be equal to the density of that is minus rho divided by 3 the vector position is just r and therefore you're going to have a vector r out there so it's the sum of these two contributions the net g is going to be and therefore we are going to end up with the gravitational field at the point r which is a constant if you take any point inside this sphere well it has a gravitational field which is in that direction because it's in the direction of minus a and there's a constant multiplying it so if you were to leave a point mass anywhere out here you do travel in this direction if initial velocity is zero that's the direction of acceleration they would all move in this direction 